Today, I'm going to walk you guys through how I meal prep and how I set myself up for the whole week with a bunch of healthy meals. So this is easy enough that anyone can do it. And honestly, it will just save you so much time throughout the week to have a bunch of prepared healthy foods ready to go in the fridge. So as I've mentioned before, I like to meal prep a little bit differently. I think when most people think of meal prep, they think of pre-portioned out meals where you're eating the same thing for a few days in a row. And that's a really great way to do it if you do like that simplicity. But if you like a little more variety, you can do something called a batch prep, which is what we're going to do today. And that is where you prepare separate ingredients and then combine them when you're ready to make a meal. So there really is no wrong way to do a meal prep. It's basically just whatever works best for you and your family's lifestyle. And the goal is really just to save time, save money, and have those healthy foods prepared and ready to go. So the first step is to plan, and this is actually a very important part of meal prep. Even if you're doing something like a batch prep where you want what you eat to be flexible throughout the week, you still need to do some type of planning so that you know what to prep and what to buy. So I've actually been using an app to do my planning, and the one I'm using is called Plan to Eat, and I'm actually partnering with them for today's video because you guys, I love, love, love this app. It has made the planning part of meal prep so much easier. First of all, it's a great place to store all your recipes, because if you're anything like me, you're probably scrolling online, see a recipe you like, and then save it in a bookmark or an open tab, and then never go back to it or in my case, 300 recipes. I literally had so many recipes saved and nowhere to store them. So with Plan to Eat, all you need to do is to import the recipe and then it'll save it for you. Of course, you can categorize it so you can find it more easily later, and then you will actually end up cooking those recipes you have saved. Here, you can easily change the serving size, which helps you automatically calculate the new recipe quantities. This especially makes meal planning so easy because sometimes you want to size up or size down the recipe, depending on if you're cooking for or one or two people, or maybe a large group. And this just helps you automatically calculate all of those new ingredient quantities. And then once you pick the recipes that you want for the week, or even just a couple days, it will automatically generate a shopping list for you. So you can take that list, go through your pantry, fridge, and freezer, and cross off anything that you have already, because we don't want any duplicates. And then take the remaining items on the list and head to the store, you have a shopping list ready to go. So there's actually a free 14 day trial for the app where you don't even need to input any credit card info, which I love because sometimes you just want to try something out with no commitment. And they're also offering a very generous 25% off of their annual subscription if you sign up with the link below. So even if you're just doing the free trial, make sure you use the Let's Eat Plans link. And that way, if you do decide to sign up, you will already have that 25% off discount applied for you. So once I've made my plan, it is time to shop. And I usually like to go shopping mid-morning because I just find that it is less crowded. And then I also will still have time time to prep after. Getting through the grocery store is so much faster when you have a list. It stops impulse buying, it saves you money. And of course, it's just nice to be in and out of the store in like 20 minutes. So since I already had a lot of things at home, I actually didn't need to buy that much at the grocery store, which is great. And now is the fun part because instead of putting all of this away and forgetting about it, we are going to prep everything so that it's ready to use. I'm actually going to start by taking out what I already have because we are gonna prep it all together. And actually before we start washing and shopping, I'm just quickly putting away any of the items that we're not using right away. So like this fruit just gets stored on the counter, frozen items go to the freezer, canned items go to the pantry. First things first, if you are going to be baking anything in the oven, I always suggest preheating the oven first. And or if you're going to be cooking anything that takes a long time, like something in the instant pot, like a bean or a grain, go ahead and get that started as well so that it can be cooking while you're prepping the other food. I actually am going to be doing a baked tofu today. So I'm just gonna start with preheating the oven. To get started with washing, I'm just using these wash basins. I find these so, so handy. I'll link some similar ones in the description box down below in case you wanna check them out. But basically it is like a wash basin and then a draining basket. And these are really great if you wanna wash things separately because you can just do a small batch and fill this up partially with water. So these are usually what I use. Otherwise I will just fill the entire sink and wash everything together. That's always another option as well. Now, as you're washing, you may have some things that are like 
in bulk or larger quantities. Like for example, I have these cucumbers and the bell peppers, I do have a lot of them as well. Now, not everything is going to stay as fresh once it's washed and chopped. So if you're not planning to eat all of these cucumbers, which is quite a bit, over the next three or four days, then I would recommend just washing a few of them and cutting those up and having those ready to go. And then on your next prep, you can wash the rest. So that's just a little tip. If you do have something in a larger quantity, you don't need to prep everything right away. Just prep what you're going to eat for the week. Once I drain my veggies, I like to peel anything if needed. And then with these veggies, I'm just gonna use them to make a snack box. So I'm cutting the celery, carrot, cucumber, and adding the tomatoes in there. I have just found this so, so helpful for having a weeknight snack prepped and ready to go in the fridge. If I'm getting dinner or something ready and I just want something to snack on, these make a perfect healthy option. And of course, just choose any veggies that you like to snack on here. It doesn't have to be the same ones that I'm using. And I've also been loving having salad boxes ready because I love grated carrot in my salads, but I got tired of taking out the grater every time I wanted to have a salad. So this way we have a few days worth prepped and done already. And again, just customize it to whatever kind of salad veggies that you typically use. The bell peppers, as I mentioned, we have a lot of, so the extras are going back into the fridge. And then I just like to slice the tops off first and clean out all the seeds inside. And then I'll cut them into long strips. They are versatile that way because they are great as is for snacking. They're great just tossed into a pan for stir fries. You can roast them for fajitas, or of course you can chop them smaller and put them in salads. And for our last salad veggie, I'm just dicing up a couple cucumbers. Now that the oven is fully preheated, I wanna get the tofu baking in there. So I really like this extra firm tofu from Costco. What I actually do with it is I pop it in the freezer as soon as I buy it, and that way it will last a lot longer. And then also it improves the texture quite a bit when you freeze it and then defrost it. So I just took these two last night out of the freezer and popped them in the fridge to defrost overnight. And so now when I go to make the tofu, you will see how much more water comes out. You don't actually need to do a full press of the tofu. You can just really wring out the excess water with your hands instead. And we're just gonna keep the seasoning on these pretty basic. I actually have my favorite tofu chorizo recipe saved in my plan to eat app, so I'm going to be loosely following that. I'll link that one down below in case you haven't tried it yet. It is delicious. So I basically follow that and just swap out a couple of the seasonings if I wanna mix it up a bit. After wringing out the excess water, you can just tear the tofu with your hands or you can cube it or crumble it for different texture variations. And then I'm just adding some apple cider vinegar, tamari, ajika seasoning, mushroom seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, and the rest of the spices. Plus the secret ingredient, a bit of cornstarch, which will help the tofu get nice and crispy when it bakes. And then we'll just pop this onto a parchment or silpat lined baking sheet and into the oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. So next I'm just gonna get a pot of water started on the stove top with a steam rack inside, and that is for steaming our baby potatoes. Since I have the oven on, I could actually just bake them with everything else, but I really love steamed potatoes and they don't take that long on the stove top. So we are just gonna get those washed and chopped and into the steamer. They should be pretty fast, they only take about 10 minutes. And while those are steaming, we will finish up with the rest of the veggies. These are going to get added into Buddha bowls this week, so I just like to have them cooked and ready to eat. For kale, I like to remove the stems because I just find them a bit tough and not as enjoyable as the leaves. So you can just pull the leaves off gently from the stem by hand, or you can run your fingers down the stem and remove the leaves that way. Sometimes I find the leaves a little bit too tough to do that, but just give it a try and find whatever's easiest for you. And lately I've been using baking soda to wash my leafy greens. I think it does a pretty good job at removing any leftover dirt or residue. So after letting them soak in the baking soda water, just give them an extra rinse and they're good to go. This is the other kale that I have to use up today. It's a bit wilted, but the trick to reviving it is to use ice cold water when soaking it and let it soak for around 10 to 15 minutes in that extra cold water. And you'll notice it will become nice and vibrant again, just like that. 
These are such a game changer for meal prep. They are just kitchen towels, but I like to use them to store my leafy greens, such as kale or lettuce. I just find that they help to keep them really fresh, probably because they're absorbing some of that excess moisture. So I just like to use them inside of a Tupperware or glass storage container, or even just in a Ziploc bag that works as well. And I've just had really good success with keeping my greens fresh that way. So just lay all your greens out on your kitchen towels and then wrap them up and store them in either a storage container or a Ziploc. And these will stay good for at least a week. I love to use kale in salads, but it's also great in soups and stews, tofu scramble, or even for kale chips. Now with lemons, I find it so much easier to have the juice squeezed and ready to use. So I like to batch my lemons and do a few all at once. The juice can either get stored in the fridge for a couple weeks or in the freezer for a couple months. And you can even zest your lemons first. If you did want to save that zest, you could store it in the freezer as well. So I'm just adding the juice to these silicone ice cube trays and then the whole tray gets added to the freezer. You can pop frozen cubes out as needed and add them into anything where you need fresh lemon juice. With garlic, I like to have ready to use cloves. So I've just been peeling them and keeping them whole in a glass jar. These cloves will stay fresh in the fridge for at least a week. You could also freeze them as well. I like to freeze minced garlic usually. And I always use glass jars for storing garlic because it's much easier to wash and remove the smell from. We're also just going to make a very quick sauce to go with our batch prep for the week. I love cashew cream because it is so versatile. Basically, it's just a very good base that throughout the week you can add different ingredients to and make it different flavors. Plus, it's really, really easy to make. All we need is cashews and water. So we're gonna start by soaking some raw cashews in boiling water for about 10 minutes. And then once they're softened, go ahead and drain them, add them to the blender with fresh water and just blitz that up. This is really good with a little bit of hot sauce added. That's my favorite combo for bootables. I also like to do a cashew ranch, which can be used for dipping for our snacking veggies, or you could even make it sweet if you wanted to by adding some maple syrup. The tofu is done baking, so I've just let it cool down a bit. And same with our steamed potatoes. So obviously you can do a simple prep like this in a short amount of time, or even if you do a longer prep where you do cook a few more items, having all of this done and ready to eat will save you so much time throughout the week. It is so, so worth it if you're wanting to eat healthier this year. If you have any questions about meal prep, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're looking for any inspiration on how to use up all of these items, make sure you check out this video here. It has a bunch of meal ideas and I think you're gonna love it.